Stop me if you heard of this one before. An anime that takes place in a world where humanity is in a battle against supernatural creatures that are trying to hurt them. The main character inexplicably gains the ability to turn into one of these creatures and uses this power to fight against them. There's an elite force of soldiers tasked with fighting these creatures, which the main character eventually becomes a member of. The main character has a crisis of identity as he struggles between his human side and his monster side. Humanity's side distrusts the protagonist and starts to question his allegiance. However, as stronger and stronger monsters start showing up, the only person who can take on the threat is the protagonist. Now it does feel like I've just described the plot of Attack on Chainsaw Ghoul, but this is actually the premise of the newest upcoming big shonen anime, Kaiju number 8. From its premise, I wouldn't blame you for thinking it's just another cookie cutter shonen anime. While Kaiju number 8 shares a lot of similarities with its predecessors, this story has something that sets it aside from almost every other story in this genre. It has, and get ready for this, a protagonist in his 30s. In most shonen anime, the protagonists usually don't reach their 30s until the final time skip after defeating the final boss. Most shonen anime create a power fantasy for teenagers and young adults, an audience that is just starting to figure themselves out and learn about life. Hence why a lot of shonen protagonists are usually teenagers or young adults. Kaiju number 8 gives us a story from the perspective of someone who's lived through that stage of life gotten through school, secured a job, paid taxes, and currently exists in a version of adulthood that is the antithesis of their childhood dream. The main character of Kaiju No. 8, Kafka Hibano, starts the story at age 32, and his age strikes at the core of the entire story, that it's never too late to achieve your dream. But how does he do this, and why do I think this show will change your life? Well, that's what this video is going to be breaking down. So without further ado, grab your combat suits and choke down your mini kaiju happy meals as we explore the deeper themes behind kaiju number 8. There are some minor spoilers ahead for the first chapter or so of the manga and most likely the entire first episode of the anime. To fully understand the meaning behind Kafka Hibino's journey, let's consider something that we've all had at some point in our lives, but many of us have likely forgotten or diverged from, our childhood dreams. Whether it's wanting to be an astronaut, or a firefighter, or a doctor, everyone has had aspirations of what they wanted to be when they grew up. Some people, through having the right motivations, resources, and experiences, are lucky enough to have achieved those childhood goals. Many others, however, are hit with a strong dose of reality and have to let go of those dreams that they were so fond of since they were children. This is the position that Kafka Hibino finds himself in at age 32, which in shonen protagonist years means he's essentially an old man at this point. Since he was a child, Kafka has had one single goal in his mind, a single dream that he's wanted more than anything, to join the Kaiju Defense Force and fight for humanity against the monsters known as Kaiju that have been attacking the world for centuries. No one knows where they came from, but over the years, there have always been a defense force that saves people from the jaws of these creatures. The defense force creates equipment and combat suits out of the body parts of slain kaiju to effectively fight against them. They are seen as humanity's greatest heroes and the most elite warriors in society. Hibano isn't alone in having this dream as his childhood best friend Mina Ashiro shares the same aspiration. After witnessing the destruction of their home by Kaiju, both Kafka and Mina promised each other that they both join the Kaiju Defense Force and take out Kaiju side by side. Kafka's motivation drove him to try to enroll in the Kaiju Defense Force. It then drove him to try again and again, and again, and again and again ad nauseum. Kafka spent years trying to join the defense force over and over again without any success. And then, it was as if he blinked and he was no longer a bright-eyed, ambitious child with a big dream. But now, he was an adult in a single-bedroom apartment surrounded by empty beer cans watching the news and seeing people living his dream of saving the world from kaiju. It's alright though, since he's still contributing to the fight against kaiju by being part of the team that cleans up the remains of kaiju after battles. This job, while it's an important part of society, is an unglamorous echo of the original dream he's had since he was a child. Instead of being one of the heroes who takes down the kaiju and protects the world, Kafka is cleaning up after those heroes while getting covered in ambiguous kaiju fluids. 
But what about Kafka's best friend Mina? Let's check in to see how far she's come in accomplishing their dream. Oh, she's become a decorated squad leader and is touted as humanity's strongest weapons against giant kaiju. That must have done wonders for Kafka's self-esteem. Not only did Kafka fail to accomplish his dream, but his best friend has eclipsed his growth and achieved the same dream beyond anything he was capable of. Somewhere along the lines, between the numerous failures, Kafka relinquished his dream and resigned himself to a life of benign normalcy. He's got a decent position and he's got enough money for food and housing, so what else could he want? Even though he never accomplished his lifelong dream, his life is now good enough. This was his life for years, stable yet satisfying, comfortable yet mediocre, good enough but not good enough. This was how he spent most of his young adulthood and before he knew it, he was already 32, an age at which society expects you to have already figured out what you want in life. Age is one of the only limiting factors in life that we can do nothing about. No matter how hard we push against it, time always marches on and we can never get back the years that have passed us by. Once we've missed the deadlines that society has imposed on us, it can feel like we've failed in life. Whether it be attending a university after high school, or acquiring a job after that, or having your life figured out after you turn 21 or even 18, there's a lot of pressure on people to be successful within a certain timeline. Once that window of time has passed and you have aged out of the young adult demographic, it can feel like you haven't done anything with the time you've been given. This goes double for any aspirations and dreams that you developed when you were a child. One of the blessings of youth is an infinite amount of idealism that you can become anything you want when you grow up. However, when you actually grow up, those dreams become less and less achievable. Life throws obstacle after obstacle between us and our dreams, and the older we get, the more clear those obstacles become. Eventually, for a lot of people, they understand why they they call dreams, dreams. Kafka Hibino understood this and let go of his dream of joining the Kaiju Defense Force. He's past that window of opportunity and past the point where his dreams were achievable. This was until he met a young, bright-eyed trainee who was also looking to join the force, Reino Ichikawa. Reino, who hasn't yet been jaded by the trials and tribulations of time, scolds Kafka for giving up on his dreams so easily. They eventually build a friendship over time, and during an unexpected kaiju attack, Kafka saves Reino's life, who in turn saves his life. This was the incident that woke up Kafka from his dormancy and reignited his motivation to try to join the defense force one last time. At this exact moment, a small kaiju decides to worm his way into Kafka's mouth and turns him into a kaiju. This, of course, does not bode well for his goal of joining the group that specifically exterminates kaijus. Luckily, Kafka is able to shapeshift back into his human form to work to achieve his goal. I won't go into the rest of the plot, but let's just say many anime hijinks ensue and we see Gein from Bleach isekai'd as a kaiju hunter. Kafka's story gives us a depiction of someone who is truly beginning to live their life at age 32. By having the main character be twice the age of your average shonen protagonist, this story sends a clear message that it is never too late to achieve your dreams. It's never too late to be the hero, and it's never too late to live your best life. Age is only a limiting factor to life if you let it. That's what Reino helped Kafka realize when they met. This lesson hits a lot harder when you consider the real life examples of people who didn't find success in their passions until later in their lives. Stan Lee wrote his first successful comic at age 38. J.R.R. Tolkien was also 38 years old when he wrote The Hobbit and 45 when he began writing Lord of the Rings. And our beloved Afro Samurai Samuel L. Jackson was 41 when he first started acting. For every prodigy that reached success at an early age, there is someone out there trying their hardest and climbing their way towards their dreams slowly but surely. That's what Kaiju Number 8 teaches us. We all have our own time frame in which we achieve success. Your dream is unique to you, and so is the time it takes you to achieve it. The only way that dream can really die is if you give up on it. I find this message to be a hopeful point of view, especially for those who grew up with One Piece or Naruto. 
That demographic of anime fans are most likely in their 20s or even 40s now, and I'm sure there are more than a few of them who haven't become their version of Pirate King or Hokage yet. Kaiju number 8 gives a message to those people and everyone else who have abandoned the dreams they had long ago. The story tells you that it's never too late, your age doesn't hold you back, and do not give up on your dreams. Thank you so much for watching the video. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on Kaiju number 8. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, I'll catch you next time with more lukewarm takes.